last video I talked about uh, the first T which is tone, atony. Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about the remaining T's and other minor causes of postpartum hemorrhage. Start with the second T, okay, the trauma, laceration of genital tract, whether it was the cervix or the vagina, okay. So what we have to do in this case, first of all, when we have a postpartum hemorrhage, the first thing we have to do is to inspect the vagina, the cervix, you know, if we have some uh, <coughs> lacerations, okay, so we have to inspect perineum, labium, and periurethra, perineum, labium, and periurethra, and if we find some lacerations, we have to repair them. Now let's move to the important subject, the retained product of conception, retained product of conception, whether it is the membranes of the baby or the placenta. Okay, how to deal with uh, this retained product of uh, conception? First of all, you have to, uh, as we said, to inspect for any uh, local causes like cervical or vaginal laceration. Then we have to, if we have a high suspicion of retained product of conception, to do a careful inspection of the placenta. And even if we don't have any suspicion of retained product of conception, we have always to check out the placenta, okay, careful inspection of the placenta. If after doing a careful inspection of placenta, we have a suspicion of retained product of conception, then we have to explore more, okay. If the cervix has not contracted down yet, then we move to manual exploration of the placenta. But if the cervix has contracted down, okay, has contracted down the cervix, then we move to ultrasound to diagnose. So if the cervix is, has not contracted down, then we use manual exploration of the placenta. If the cervix has contracted down, we move to ultrasound. We have, from these two, we have a high suspicion for of retained product of conception. Then we move to DNC. DNC is both diagnostic and therapeutic procedure. After doing DNC, we still have a bleeding. What to do? We have to suspect placenta previa or placenta accreta. Okay, placenta accreta. The adherence of placenta to the uh, uterine, uterine wall. Uh, in the cases of placenta brevia, we have a bleeding that does not respond to drugs or to uterine massage, as in atony. Then if we have a bleeding that does not respond to both drugs and uterine massage, then we have to suspect placenta, brevia, uh, placenta accreta. And I talked about placenta brevia, uh, sorry, placenta accreta, when I uh, explained uh, placenta brevia, you can uh, uh, go back to the video and watch placenta accreta okay so uh, first of all you have to uh, know if there is any local cause of uh, uh, postpartum hemorrhage like cervix, uh, cervix or the vagina then we have to inspect the uh, placenta if you have a suspicion of placenta loss then we have to do ultrasound or manual exploration if we have a cervix that uh, has not contracted then after ultrasound and manual exploration if we have a high suspicion of placenta uh, of retained pieces of uh, uh, conception, the, then we move to DNC, diagnostic and therapeutic. If there is still bleeding, then we um, we suspect placenta accreta. Okay, so these are the most important uh, causes of a postpartum hemorrhage. The first one, atony, the laceration, okay, or, or uh, of the genital tract, the retained product of conception, tissue, okay. And the fourth T is coagulation defect, thrombus, coagulation defect, thrombus. What are the risk factor of coagulation defect or the uh, uh, thrombus? Abruption placenta is very important risk factor for DIC, okay, intrauterine fetal death for a long period, okay, congenital coagulopathy, preeclampsia also is very important risk factor for both abruption placenta and coagulation defects. 
okay and amniotic fluid embolism actually the, these are very dangerous and serious conditions that we have to salute abruptio placenta and uterine fetal death congenital coagulopathy preeclampsia and eclampsia amniotic fluid uh, embolism okay so these are the four major risk factors of a postpartum uh, hemorrhage let's now move to the minor risk factors the uterine rupture and we discussed the uterine rupture in the antipartum hemorrhage okay and you know all what is uterine rupture the last thing i'm going to talk about is uterine inversion uterine inversion uh, happens in one to uh, every 2500 uh, pregnant woman okay with the risk factors of what what is uterine inversion for example this is the uterus okay after the, the placenta is here after delivery we track the placenta and the placenta is adherent to the upper segment of the uterus the, the form of the uterus will be inverted okay like that like that this is the upper segment of the uterus so the risk factors of uterine invasion as expected is fundal implantation of the uterus fundal implantation of the uh, placenta uh, okay uh, of the uterus the second risk factor is accreta adherence of the placenta to the uterus you can expect that of course atony the weakness of the contractions of the uterus it will be smooth and large uterus and can easily just go uh, and do uh, uterine inversion okay and excessive attraction of the cord excessive attraction of the cord will attract the upper segment of the uterus or the segment that uh, have uh, that has the uh, cord and will uh, will cause uterine inversion okay how to deal with uterine inversion first of all if bleeding happens uterine inversion it is an obstetric emergency obstetric emergency and we can have a vasovagal attack so it's, it's very serious okay to have uterine inversion so how to deal with uh, bleeding if happens by stabilizing the patient the first thing we have to do is stabilizing the patient abc to big uh, iv pores okay a fluid replacement blood transfusion full catheter uh, ptt pt INR and the cross match okay then uh, how the, this is how we stabilize the patient then we we anesthetize the patient with nitroglycerin or uh, or general anesthesia with halothane uh, okay so these factors nitroglycerin or general anesthesia with, with halothane will relax the uterus so that we can do a manual replacement of the uterus manual replacement of the uterus if manual replacement of the uterus is not working with us then we move to laparotomy laparotomy to correct the uterine inversion to correct the uterine inversion so by this we end the postpartum hemorrhage i want to review uh, rapidly what we talked about the four major causes of uh, postpartum hemorrhage is uh, uterine atony, uh, the trauma, laceration, genital tract, uh, the tissue retained uh, pieces of conception, okay, and other minor uh, uh, coagulation defects, thrombus, the fourth T, okay, uterine inversion, uterine rupture, and other minor causes, okay, how to deal with the case of uh, 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 of uh, postpartum hemorrhage first of all we have to inspect the cervix and vagina for any local cause of uh, bleeding then we move to uh, examination of the uterus is it uh, soft in large buggy uh, to indicate uterine atony okay and if we suspect uterine atony we have to do uterine massage with IV oxytocin then methergen then prostin, uh, prostin, the prostaglandin F2. After that, we move to D and C to rule out retained pieces of conception. And also, we can uh, suspect retained pieces of conception by the inspection of the placenta. So we have to inspect the placenta before doing D and C, of course, and uh, with inspection of the cervix and the vagina at the beginning. 
okay if d and c did not work then we move to balloon tamponade or interventional radiologist can go to uterine artery embolization uterine artery embolization uh, and <coughs> after that we move to laparotomy laparotomy we do ligation of hypogastric and iliac artery internal iliac and uterine arteries if that doesn't work then we move to exploration uh, uh, laparotomy uh, okay uh, i'm sorry we move to b lynch uh, procedure and after b lynch pr procedure the last solution is hysterectomy the last solution is hysterectomy thank you very much for watching see you in the next video